There's not a single good reason for any worker, especially any union member, to vote against Barack Obama. And there's only one really, really bad reason to vote against Barack Obama. And that's because he's not white. And I want to talk about that issue because I saw it myself in Pennsylvania in the primary. I went back to my hometown. I went back to my hometown in Nemecol and I ran into a woman that I've, I've known for years. She was active in democratic politics when I was still in grade school, back when Abe Lincoln was born. She got to talking and I asked if she'd made up her mind who she was supporting and she said, oh, absolutely, I'm voting for Hillary. There's no way that I'd ever vote for Obama. I said, why is that? She said, well, he's Muslim. And I said, well, actually, he's Christian, just like you and I, but so what if he's Muslim? Then she shook her head and said, well, he won't wear that American flag pin on his lapel. And I looked at my lapel and I said, I don't have one. And by the way, you don't have one on either, but come on, he wears one plenty of times. He says it takes more than wearing a, a flag pin to be patriotic. Well, I just don't trust him. And I said, why is that? And she drops her voice a bit. And she says, because he's black. And I said, look around this town. Nemecolon's a dying town. There's no jobs here. Our kids are moving away because there's no future here. And here's a man, Barack Obama, who's going to fight for people like us, and you want to tell me that you won't vote for him because of the color of his skin? Are you out of your ever-loving mind, ladies? See, brothers and sisters, We can't tap dance around the fact that there's a lot of folks out there just like that woman. And a lot of them are good union people. They just can't get past the idea that there's something wrong with voting for a black man. Well, those of us who know better can't afford to sit silently or look the other way while it's happening. Now, I'm not one for, vote, for, for quoting dead philosophers, but back in the 1700s, Edmund Burke said, all that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. Well, there is no evil that's inflicted more pain and more suffering than racism. And it's something that we in the labor movement have a very, very special responsibility to challenge. It's our special responsibility because we know better than anyone else how racism is used to divide working people. We've seen how companies set workers against worker. They throw white workers a few crumbs. They discriminate against black workers or Latino workers, and we all, we all end up losing. But we've seen something else, too. We've seen that when we have the courage, the good sense, the trade union values to cross the color line and stand together, arms locked, no one, 
no one has ever been able to keep us down. That's why we created the CIO. That's why industrial unions were the first to stand up against lynching and segregation. People need to know that it was the Steel Workers Organizing Committee, this union, that was founded on the principle of organizing all workers without regard to race. That's why the labor movement, imperfect as we are, is the most integrated institution in America. Now, I don't think that we ought to be out there pointing fingers and calling them racist. Instead, we need to educate them that if they care about holding on to their jobs, if they care about health care, if they care about pensions and their homes, if they care about creating good jobs with clean energy, child care, pay equity for women workers, there's only one candidate on the ballot this fall who's on that side, only one candidate who's going to stand up for their families, only one candidate who has earned their vote, and that candidate is Barack Obama, and come November, he's going to be the President of the United States. And after he's elected, we're going to hit the ground running so that years from now we're going to be able to tell our grandkids that 2008 was the year that we finally turned it, this country finally turned its back on men like George Bush and Dick Cheney and John McCain. We're going to be able to say that 2008 was the year that we started ending the war in Iraq so that we could use money to create new jobs building wind generators, solar collectors, clean coal technology, and retrofitting millions of buildings. We're going to be able to look back and say that 2008 was the year that the tide began to turn against the Rush Limbaugh's and the Bill O'Reilly's and the Ann Coulter's and the right-wing race haters. Brothers and sisters, we're going to be able to say that 2008 was the year that we took back our country and built a government that embraced workers and loved unions and saw the power that we bring and the justice that we instill in a country.